Um, I want to start just by recognizing the elephant in the room. Uh, many of you in this room have what I call a DVD religion. There is much dependence upon DVDs. We are listening and consuming to the sermons of these men who have studied the Word of God for themselves and they've presented to others, but sometimes we have lacked in our own searching of the Scriptures. And for those of you who are not watching the DVDs so much, I call this the, the YouTube religion. <laughs> Maybe for you it is YouTube videos and you, you know what I'm talking about. Guilty. Guilty. So we, we've come to a time where there seems to be a, quite the imbalance where we like to follow our, po our favorite preacher and we listen and we consume and we're learning all of these sermons. But my question is how often are we studying the Bible for ourselves and to understand what it means for me personally? Or are we depending on other teachers to explain it to us? And I, I'm obviously not against DVDs or YouTube. This video is going to be on YouTube. But I just want to encourage us that we can study the scriptures for ourselves. Turn with me in your Bible to Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to look in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 14. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 the Bible describes this condition, and there is an admonishment to the church of Ephesus. In Ephesians 4, beginning in verse 14, and the Bible says, That we henceforth be no more, what? Children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of what? doctrine by the slight of man and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him into Christ in all things which is the head even Christ so God wants us to grow up to mature spiritually and part of this maturing of our Christian experience is to no longer be carried about by every wind of doctrine to sit into whatever we may feel or position that we hold to or, or the latest sermon that we've heard. Sometimes it could, be, it could be challenging. But my goal is to, by God's grace, to equip you to study to show yourself approved. And I want to encourage us that studying our Bible is like charging your cell phone. Has, uh, have anyone in this room ever killed your phone? Or accidentally let it die? What did you forget to do? You forgot to charge it. Well, in like manner, when we are, when we are charging, uh, having our devotions, studying the Word of God, and eating his word it's like what sister tina was sharing it's like abiding in christ we find our source and our strength and likewise if i forget to charge my phone it's gonna die and if we disconnect ourselves from the source of life and light and strength then what can we expect we're gonna die spiritually we're going to have challenges that that uh, we otherwise wouldn't have and we experience spiritual death so I am a big, big promoter, and I encourage people in their devotions to be intentional with your devotions, that we, that we can study things that um, we are currently going through. The Word of God, it, it's alive. It's a living book. God, God is not dead. He wants to have a conversation with us. He wants to have a personal walk with us. And there are very relevant things that we can experience in God's Word. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 28. Proverbs 15, 28 has a very um, interesting verse. It describes how the righteous study. We want to be called righteous by God, right? How do the righteous study the Bible? Proverbs 15, 28. How does the righteous study the Bible? The book of Proverbs says, The heart of the righteous studieth to what? Answer. To answer. But the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. 
That's very interesting. There's a distinction between the motive or how we are studying. Are you studying to learn or are you studying to answer? Studying to answer your questions, to answer the questions of others, or to answer maybe some objections, or to answer the experiences, the circumstances that you find yourself in. Are you searching God's answer for your life, or are you just studying so that you can learn and learn and learn and constantly consume many DVDs, many YouTube videos, and you're like, wow, this is really interesting. Why do you, why do you study? Because the righteous will study to answer, and I encourage you, share what you know. Because as you impart to others, give, and it shall be given unto you. It's a very powerful thing when you do this. There is a scripture song in 1 Peter 3.15. You guys want to learn a scripture song? It's really, really simple. It's just one verse. This scripture song, it actually repeats three times. So I will sing it the first time, and I'll, I'll just kind of show you it. And then the second time, those who are brave, go ahead and sing along with me. And on the third time, I hope to hear everyone. Okay? This is 1 Peter 3.15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Brave friends, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, everyone. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Wow, there's a lot of brave souls out there. Praise the Lord, but this shows us that part of the sanctification process, sanctify them by thy truth, thy word is truth. As we study the word of God, we want to be ready always to give an answer to every man. People have questions, and the world has a right to be able to ask the people of God, what is the meaning of these things that are taking place? And we, as children of the heavenly king, have the responsibility to be ready to give an answer. Who wants to be ready to give an answer? Praise the Lord. And so we want, I want to show you how we can do this. So Part of it is by looking at the church of Berean. Why did the Bereans search the scriptures daily? This is, um, this is a very important part. Acts chapter 17 and verse 11 talks about these Bereans. They were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures how often? Daily. Why? Whether those things were so. So what's interesting about the Bereans is that they didn't just accept Paul's words for, as gospel truth. Even though he was an apostle, they took his words and they, they had to have taken notes. They, had, they, they took it home and they searched the scriptures every day. And they were, they were willing, they had a readiness of mind, they were open-minded to accept it. But they studied to see whether these things were so. They were studying to answer. They were trying to know for themselves what say the scriptures and we would do well to follow the example of the Bereans and I encourage everybody to to take notes 